Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about metformin. Metformin is an anti-diabetic drug belongs to biguanide class. Here you should remember that metformin is the only drug available in this class. One more drug was available previously called fenformin. However, it was discontinued because of the strong association with lactic acidosis. Metformin does not bind to plasma protein. It is excreted unchanged in the urine and hence contraindicated in renal failure. We will discuss about that later in this video. Still now, it is difficult to find a full explanation of the mechanism of action of metformin. However, the primary effect of metformin is to activate the enzyme adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase, which is also called AMPK. So now let's see how metformin decreases or maintains the blood glucose level. Metformin activates AMPK enzyme in liver which inhibits the gluconeogenesis. The inhibition of gluconeogenesis leads to decreased glucose production. Patients with type 2 diabetes have considerably less fasting glycemia as well as lower postprandial hyperglycemia after administration of metformin. Also, Hypoglycemia is rare during metformin therapy. That's why it is more appropriately termed as euglycemic agent. There are other mechanisms also like it increases the insulin sensitivity and it can increase the fatty acid oxidation. It can decrease the intestinal glucose absorption. And one more thing I would like to mention here. It also delays gastric emptying and reduces appetite. This can cause weight loss in some cases. Let's see what are the clinical uses. Metformin is the drug of choice for treatment and prophylaxis of type 2 diabetes mellitus. It is used as monotherapy or in combination with other oral hypoglycemic agents. Metformin is also used in PCOD to decrease insulin resistance and improve ovulation. It is also used in metabolic syndrome in HIV, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and to reduce antipsychotics associated to weight gain. Metformin use is associated with decreased risk of pancreatic cancer in diabetes mellitus. Metformin therapy also decreases the risk of macrovascular as well as microvascular diseases. It is currently under trial as an anti-aging agent. One interesting thing I would like to mention here that metformin did not prevent diabetes in older or leaner pre-diabetics. Now let's discuss about some side effects and toxicities of metformin. As we have previously discussed that metformin delays gastric emptying and reduce appetite. It causes the most common side effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and anorexia. These side effects can be avoided by taking low dose of metformin or simply by taking with milk. Long term use of metformin can cause vitamin B12 deficiency. Metformin interferes with the calcium dependent absorption of vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex in the terminal ileum. And vitamin B12 deficiency can occur after many years of metformin use. Periodic screening of vitamin B12 deficiency should be considered, especially in patients with peripheral neuropathy or macrocytic anemia. Increased intake of calcium may prevent the metformin induced vitamin B12 malabsorption. Now the side effect we need to worry about is lactic acidosis. It more commonly occurs in renal failure patients as it is excreted unchanged in urine. So in renal failure patient, the excretion of metformin is decreased and its level increases in blood. As we have discussed that the primary action of metformin is to block the hepatic gluconeogenesis. Now the main substrate for gluconeogenesis is lactate, glycerol and alanine which are converted to glucose in the liver. So increased metformin level in blood in renal failure impaired the hepatic utilization of lactic acid. That increases the level of lactic acid in blood which eventually leads to lactic acidosis. 
other conditions which increases the chances of lactic acidosis like severe respiratory disease liver disease congestive heart failure and chronic alcohol abuse metformin is also contraindicated in those conditions